Nocturnal Return can be quite the challenge to pick up, as it houses many complicated features. So to help new players, I've compiled a list of things that I wish I knew starting out. And hey, even if you aren't new to the game, I encourage you to watch as you still may learn some things you may have not known. So to start us off, I'm going to teach you about the save plan feature. If you head over to loadout here, find the character you want to play, such as Sua, and click search save plans, you can see what is currently being played in the meta. I recommend searching by either most recommended or by uses. In this case, you're going to get this one here, made by Superior One. And all you have to do is click import save plan, and now you have it on your list of uh, builds. If a friend or someone has given you uh, an ID for for their build, all you have to do, all you have to do is click import save plan ID, paste it right here, confirm, and you'll have it in here as well. When you're ready to make your own plans, you also click new plan here, or if you want to edit current ones, you just need to click the little square with a pencil, and now you're able to edit and save how you want the build itself. Let's say instead of the Feng Menace, I want the weight of the world. Now you have that changed, you can save it, and now it's updated for you. When you load into the game, you'll see there's a whole line of characters to choose from, all with unique abilities and playstyles. While it is good to hone in on the main character for, let's say, ranked gameplay, it is good to get a feel for all the characters so not only it helps you find the key character for yourself, but it helps you learn how to deal with characters when you fight them, as you know how they're piloted. I re recommend playing through all the free characters that rotate weekly, as you can see right here. This one is a big one to note. Knowing how to make food and SP is key to survival on this island, and do not overlook it. It is good to note what kind of ingredients are in your routing and what you can make along the way. If you look at my Sua build here, I start in Factory, where I need two lighters. I always try and find a third lighter though, so I can boil both my waters. Because heading into Hospital, I can turn that all into purified water. And then what, later when I go into Pond, I can grab a fish, and then use the heated stone on the fish as well for food. And then when it comes to your bread you start with, in Hospital, you can grab lemons for citrus cake. So then eventually when you end up in Cemetery to get the Tree of Life, you can grab eggs to make birthday cakes. When you are doing your routing, you want to prioritize making your weapon. This is key to staying alive and not getting caught underpowered by other survivors on the island. This is also increases your speed when you are fighting animals to get that leather you may need for your build. Speaking of speed, weapons aren't the only thing to focus. Shoes are very important to get you around faster, as well as allows you to escape early fights if need be. All that said, every character is different on their routing and may build in a different order. It just comes down to knowing what you need at what stage in the game, but this is a good baseline to follow. Gold equals gooder? Not all the time. Higher rarity does not always mean better. That is right. Just cause you see it, ooh, shiny gold, doesn't mean to slap it on every character. Here's an example. Let's say we have Emma, that is a skill amp character with a shiny imperial crown. And she comes across a little wreath, which is made for auto attacking characters as it boosts your basic attack damage. You would not take the wreath over your purple imperial crown, it just wouldn't make sense. Learn your transitions. This one plays right into what we just talked about. Knowing your transitions. So you just finished your starting build, but what now? It is time to build bigger and better. There are tree of lives and meteorites that spawn at certain times, as well as you can get your hands on other pieces like mithril, force cores, and blood samples. But knowing what to do when you gra grab one of these items is key, and even prepping the item beforehand is great. Let's take a look at Razi for example. This is my current plan I use to play Razi. And this one here, you will see I have an extra plan to show you what items I tend to like to build into. The Celt requires a Force Core, which could get dropped from Omega or a later Bear, or I can get my hands on a Meteorite and a Tree of Life to craft one. While I wait for these to spawn as I'm going around the map, grabbing a Walther and Leather will prep me into making the Celt as soon as I get my hands on that Force Core. Let me state though, there is best in slot items for each character, but there is other transitions that you may come across that is better than your starting build. Let's, take a, let's look at Rai's arm for example. It says we want a mithril shield, but let's say we find a radar off of someone or an extra force core after making a kelp. 
which can be used to turn into auto arms. These two items are also very good on Ronzi and should not be passed up. Vision is key. Just like other games like this one, vision is everything. Helps you plan your next move as well as lets you keep an eye on things to not get jumped on. Making cameras, grabbing console, as well as checking bushes as you go past them can save you countless deaths. Having vision of an area and just knowing your surroundings means the world in this game, and do not overlook it. Time is everything in this game. This game is a race. Who can build their items faster, who can grab transition pieces faster, who can farm the area's animals first, also you can be ahead of the curve so you are stronger than your opponents. Being fast and efficient will help you not fall behind, because the last thing you will need you need is a fully kitted Jackie jumping on you when you are walking around with uncommon shoes and no armor. And to help you with the time, that time management, I got a little something called practice mode, where you can practice your routing, learn your skills, and even just practice moving around the map and picking up items faster out of boxes. Practice mode is a lifesaver, and I promise if you just hop in and practice moving around and grabbing things, you will improve and it will help you keep up with everyone else. Learn when and where animals spawn for that juicy XP, leather, meat, and RNG items that may drop. Let me show you a quick little route I do with Nadine for farming animals. When I'm done with my build, I'm almost always sitting in forest. So I will grab the wolves and boars as I head over to hotel, where I will fight all the animals there. From there, I can head down into beach or up into archery range, clearing that out. From then, from there, I may go head towards Alpha, a Meteorite, or a Tree of Life to grab for transitions. But after that, I will rinse and repeat, rotating through zones and clearing the animals out. So by the time I go grab, let's say, Alpha, I'll be, I'll make my way back into forest and fight those wolves again. Well that's going to cover my top 10 tips for you. If you have any questions or know any good tips yourself, please feel free to put it down below as I'm sure someone can benefit from it. You can also find me over on Twitch where I stream 5 days a week. If this guide helped you at all and you want to see more guides like this, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel.